it works. I can't believe it. Look at this. We've got 1.2 amps power coming in from the solar straight into the air conditioner. So I've just turned my old dumb air conditioner into a solar powered air conditioner. I made this video a couple of months ago and uh, I got a ton of great comments and feedback from all of you. Thank you very, very much for that. Probably one of the most commonly asked questions is how I hooked it up and how I wired it uh, more specifically. And so in today's video, we aim to try to answer those questions for you. Before I go any further, I just have to give a, a disclaimer here. Do not attempt to do this yourselves. This is incredibly dangerous. It can cause damage to your property, to the air conditioner. It can cause bodily harm and injury to you, even death and uh, may even be illegal depending on where you live. This is strictly for entertainment and conceptual purposes only and do not attempt this. Before we work on anything inside we want to be safe so we're going to pull the disconnect and then it's always a good practice to verify that there's no power so we're gonna go to the two terminals you can go to the two terminals where the power comes into the contactor. No voltage. The two terminals. Go to the two terminals where the voltage comes out of the contactor. No voltage. And then we'll also check uh, each leg to ground, but I need two hands to do that. The thought is, can I use the contactor on the air conditioner to vary when this inverter sees grid power so that when the air conditioner turns on this in turn sees the grid and starts generating power from solar offsetting the load of the air conditioner but not running any risk of back feeding to the grid and then obviously once the air conditioner satisfies and turns off then this stops seeing the grid and in turn stops the flow of electricity from the solar. Now how this works is this right here is the contactor and uh, basically it's a switch that uh, closes and allows power to feed across it and that's how your air conditioner turns off and on. The power comes in, in my case, to the bottom of the contactor right here and then it comes out of the top. So when the disconnect is put in, these wires will always have power in them. These will not unless the thermostat is calling for the air conditioning. This will close, complete the circuit, and these up here will get power. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect our inverter to this top side, the load side of the contactor. So that way the inverter only sees the power when this is energized and the AC unit is turned on. You do not want to connect it down below because that uh, can cause problems for back feeding the grid. We only want the solar power to come on when the AC is on to consume it. What we've done is just hooked up uh, one leg to one side of, there's a lot of wires here, but uh, the contact is right here. And uh, we've hooked one leg to one side, hooked the other leg to the other side. From there, you can see the wire coming out right here. Now this again is just uh, from my temporary setup, but it's uh, very open and easy to see. So that's why we're using this. But uh, this uh, is just uh, some Romex I had uh, kicking around and it has two main conductors in it and a ground. You can see right here that uh, I've transitioned from that Romex to this other cable and uh, that black cable right there is a special end phase cable because you need this connector right there to plug into the end phase inverter. So I just uh, ordered that cable when I ordered my inverter. You can notice that this other side right here, you, it's a little tricky to see, but uh, it's just terminated with some wire nuts. That is where I will hook up other inverters and daisy chain them together to increase my solar production. The ground wire uh, just comes over and attaches to the base plate of the inverter and then it also needs to come over and attach to the frame of the solar panels. And then you need some MC4 PV cable 
and that will attach between your solar panels and the micro inverter. Uh, I do have a micro air easy start. I have a whole bunch of videos about that. It makes a world of difference when you're trying to run it with a backup generator. However, it does not play a crucial role in powering this off of solar. I don't know if you could hear, but that was the nice soft start that uh, the micro air easy start gives. So that uh, fired up. Let's see what the light is doing over here. So now it's flashing orange. So as you can see, it's seeing the grid. Now this has a few minute delay before it starts uh, exporting. Just so we have a reference before it starts exporting. At the moment, on the black wire here, we're pulling 5.2 amps. And on the red wire, we're pulling 5.3 amps. So let's see how that changes once this comes online. The light continues to blink orange. I don't know if you can see that, there we go. Uh, just because it's not connected to the gateway. However, these are designed to still output power even without the uh, gateway. So let's connect our amp clamp here. Check it out, 1.1 amps. So if we come over here to the air conditioner and uh, clamp the black wire, what was over five amps is now, turn it so you can see it, 4.2 on that wire and on the red wire, 4.2. So yeah, we've lowered it by an amp on both legs. So you could easily add a few more panels, a few more inverters, enough that uh, you are really close to the amount of amps your AC draws. Don't want to go over that uh, if you don't have any kind of net metering agreement or anything where the air conditioner contactor is the thing that's controlling this. Then you've got uh, the ability to stack enough panels with enough inverters that you can completely mitigate the AC power draw of your air conditioner and let the sun power it. And you don't need to get any different air conditioners or anything like that. You just need some solar panels, some micro inverters, obviously a little different setup than uh, just an exposed uh, wire uh, running across the ground to uh, take the effort and uh, hook everything up uh, properly and in a more permanent fashion. This is just testing. All right, that concludes this little overview on the wiring for this setup. Be sure you guys are subscribed because I'm in the process of getting ready to do version 2.0 where I'm integrating some batteries with this. You'll not want to miss that. And just like last time, I want to hear from you. Leave your comments down below. I love hearing your ideas, your thoughts. You guys are all so smart. I love hearing from you. And please don't forget to smash that like button. We'll catch you next time.